Hi, I'm Joe Dante for Trails from Hell. Before there was an overpopulated Marvel Universe, there was a slightly less populated Universal Universe, uh, where all their franchise monster characters uh, began to meet each other in various movies, a whole series of pictures. Uh, and uh, the first in line was Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Uh, the idea here was that Lon Chaney, uh, Universal's new horror star, who had just appeared as the Frankenstein monster in Ghost of Frankenstein and the star of the Wolfman, was going to star in a picture that was a sequel to both movies called Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, in which he would play both the Frankenstein monster and the Wolfman. For various logistical reasons, that really didn't look like it was going to work out. And uh, so they decided, well, who are we going to have to play the monster? Well, it, it happens at the end of Ghost of Frankenstein, uh, Bela Lugosi played a character called Igor, whose, whose brain was put into the head of the Frankenstein monster. And then he started talking in Bela Lugosi's voice. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, but they figured, okay, well, let's get Bella to play the monster. Uh, and then he can, because of his dialogue, he can talk. He's, he's actually essentially playing a new character because the, the, the monster of old is gone. He's been replaced by Igor, this horrible shepherd creature. Um, and the, the filming proceeded apace. Um, but then, unfortunately, uh, they didn't reckon on the fact that Bella was 60 years old, uh, was not very spry and was going to have to be doubled uh, in a lot of the scenes by, uh, by stuntmen, which, are, which is fairly obvious in the movie. But uh, more of a problem was that part of the plot at the end of Ghost of Frankenstein was that he went blind because of the new blood in his veins. And so, of course, they dutifully had him play the monster as blind, which is where the stereotype of the reached out arms uh, with the Frankenstein monster has always come from. The problem was that uh, when they listened to Lugosi's voice, uh, it was decided that they didn't want to have the monster talk at all. So they went back and recut the picture, took out all of Lugosi's dialogue, and all the references to his blindness. So the resultant picture, which is actually kind of a mess, uh, is still a fan favorite and is still one of the more uh, highly regarded uh, of the Frankenstein B-movie sequels. Here it is. So here we're introduced to the frozen monster, but it's not even Bella, it's his double, Gil Perkins. With the monster getting the editorial short shrift, this is primarily the Wolfman's movie, with more inventive transformations and a committed turn by Lon Chaney as the morbidly possessed Larry Talbot, who's only looking for a way to die to escape his lycanthropic curse. <laughs> doesn't understand. There's a curse upon me. I change into a wolf. Listen. Even with all its production problems, the movie is great to look at, photographed by George Robinson in the usual slick studio house style, and beautifully directed by one of my favorites, the underrated Irish-born Roy William Neal, then in the midst of his successful run of wartime Sherlock Holmes movies. His moving camera, stark shadows, and clever use of foreground is stylishly atmospheric. In the 30s, he directed the Karloff classic The Black Room, and very nearly ended up directing The Lady Vanishes. Featuring a good cast of contract players, including Dwight Fry in his last credited role, and the usual propulsive music from Hans J. Salter, who used to grumble about what these things looked like before they put the music in, its success pointed the way for the rest of the sequels, which added Dracula to the mix of all-star monster rallies, until Bud and Lou came along to put a stop to it all. So if you're curious about the missing scenes, uh, here's a link to a fan-made recreation uh, on YouTube. I was afraid to run away. 